proper cervical care is a radically different approach to healthcare. It's natural. And to fully understand the concept, we want to introduce you to all the players, the body parts, the way the nerve system operates, and all the systems in your body that function so you can better understand how it works. And you know, upper cervical doctors, their main focus are these top two bones of your spine called the atlas and the axis. Atlas and axis. They sound very similar, but keep it straight this way. You know the Greek mythology figure, Atlas, holding up the world? Atlas is holding up your world, the brain. Axis is so-called because the head and the atlas pivot around the axis. The remainder of the spine, from the low back all the way up to the mid-neck region, has interlocking joints that limit how far the bones can move. But ironically enough, the atlas and axis, the top two, are not shaped the same way. They don't have the same bony locks. And the segments are, are held in place by muscles and ligaments. And so as a result, it's a more unstable area. And that's of course what gives us a tremendous amount of mobility we have in the neck area. The problem is with that increased mobility, it does us, make us more susceptible to injury in that area. The part of your nerve system that connects the brain to the rest of your body is called the brain stem, and that controls this healing process, the healing communication from your body to your brain. Now, the trick to this whole system is that the brain stem flows through those top two bones in your spine, the atlas and the axis. Think of it like a whole bunch of telephone cables or Cat5 cables flowing from your brain to every cell organ and system in your body. Now check this out. For whatever reason, if one or both of these bones are out of whack, causing irritation or pressure on the brainstem and interrupting the communication system flowing inside of it, you can end up with all kinds of health issues. I mean stuff that you would have never associated with this part of your body. Problems like allergies, high blood pressure, fibromyalgia, learning disorders, and the list goes on and on and on and on. You see what I mean? Crazy, right? So what an upper cervical practitioner does is focus on these two bones in your body, making sure that they're properly aligned and making any necessary corrections. I mean, it's simple. So why would you go and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on drugs or medicines or hospital bills when really your body may just be able to naturally heal itself from the inside out once everything's properly aligned and the communication is restored once again? You correct the cause, you correct the vertebral subluxation, and they get well. If the brain can communicate with all parts of the body, we stay well. We're not treating you for a certain condition. We're moving interference so that your body can heal itself, get itself back to normal function. Whatever that condition is, it can get back to normal function and you're healed. Do we as upper cervical doctors, do we treat diabetes? No. Legally, we can't even say we treat conditions, but we treat the body, okay? We correct the cause of the problem. We don't treat the problem. That's the problem with the healthcare system today is that they spend so much time chasing symptoms, chasing diseases, when all healing resides within you. And if we can just remove the interference in that healing process, then the body will heal on its own. That's what upper cervical is all about. So you see how radically different this style of healthcare is? You know, the concept is simple. It's completely natural and amazingly, it can aid in the powerful, innate healing and wellness process that your body goes through to combat disease and ailments and any problems that you're having in any part of your body, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. There's hope. There's hope for people that have been suffering. There's hope for people that have been sick for years. There's hope for people that have been told there's nothing else that can be done. Upper cervical chiropractic saved my life. The nervous system controls every function in the body. So it's absolutely crucial for any person, any human being, to have the nervous system functioning at 100% all the time. That way they can have the, the best chance to be as healthy as possible and to not have chronic illnesses and diseases and ailments form later on in life. You know, the more we, we understand about computers, the more we understand about the nervous system. And we know computers 
a limitless uh, capacity. And it's the same thing with the nervous system. And the nervous system actually is what animates the human body, and it's also what regulates the healing process. Brain health and healing messages leave the brain by way of the brain stem, pass through the neck, down the spinal cord, out over the entire nervous system to all parts of the body. These messages control everything that goes on in the body. These messages also direct all body healing. If that spine's on that zero position, the nervous system's wide open and life is good. If the spine's off that zero position, sometimes even a measurement of three quarters of a degree, it will create stress in, that, in the entire body from it. It doesn't take much to really create that distress. So let's say one of the top two bones in your neck gets misaligned just enough to cause some irritation to interfere with that nerve flow from your brain to any one or multiple parts of your body. Well, if where those particular nerves go do not get a full amount of nerve flow, then that part of the body is not going to work the way it's designed to work. So let's say, for example, um, you eat a candy bar, okay? Sugar goes into your system. All right, now in the stomach, you have sensors there that will send a message to the body, or to the brain, I mean, telling the brain, hey, you got, we got sugar in, in, in the digestive tract. We need to get the di sugar out of the digestive tract into the bloodstream. So then the brain then sends a message down to the pancreas, telling the pancreas, hey, we need to produce insulin. Well, let's say there's a bone misaligned here, and it's interfering with that nerve flow to that pancreas. Well, it may be interfering 1%, 2%, 10%, 50%, anything less than 100%, your pancreas isn't going to be working the way it's supposed to, thus you get diabetes, okay? Now, let's say you were to go in here and we were to find that and we were to correct that misalignment. Now, all of a sudden, you get 100% of that nerve flow from the brain down to that pancreas and then the pancreas again starts functioning the way it was supposed to. You get the full amount of insulin in the system, the sugar is taken out of the digestive system into the bloodstream. Now, all of a sudden, you no longer have diabetes. That one millimeter affects your nervous system. And because the nervous system controls everything, that's why that has such a powerful impact. Correcting that allows your body to finally heal. To better understand how upper cervical care works, you know, you really got to understand all the players involved in the system, your body parts and how your body functions. We've got the top two bones at the top of your spine, the atlas and the axis. Your nerve system flows through those top two bones. And your nerve system is like the super highway of communication throughout your entire body. And where is that communication coming from and going to? That's right, your brain. Sometimes patients really have a hard time grasping upper cervical because it, it makes too much sense. They ask me, could it really be that simple? And yeah, actually it is. It's, it's as simple as stepping on a garden hose. Let's say, for example, uh, you have a garden hose connected to the water spout, okay? Turn that garden hose on, water's flowing, flowing freely. Well, you come over, you put your foot on that garden hose. Now what's gonna happen to the water coming out the hose? Well, obviously it's gonna be diminished, possibly even cut off altogether. Well, the same thing happens with your body. I think that most people recognize that the world's greatest drugstore is within your own body. It knows how much cortisone to produce and how much antihistamine to produce. It even knows how much cholesterol to produce, provided the system that regulates that is able to do so. You have to deal with that life power and respect it and work with it. Don't fight with it. Let it have its way. You can do that when you get rid of the cause of the interruption between the source and the body by correcting the upper cervical uh, vertebral subluxation. So if the brain can't communicate with some part of the body, it's going to get sick. But if the brain can communicate with all parts of the body, we stay well. That's the simplicity of it. That's the simplicity of it. 
And people can't, you know, you can give them the garden hose analogy that there's a source for the water and you step on the hose and the water doesn't water the grass. And when you remove your foot from the hose, the water comes out and waters the grass and the grass grows. And it's too simple for them. It's just too simple. There's gotta be something more to that. There's got, we've gotta spray something on the grass. We've gotta add something to the ground to make it grow. We've gotta intervene in that. And the, and the wonderful thing about the body and the complexity of it is that it's, it's intelligent in itself. It's a self-healing organism. It just doesn't need any interference to its function. And all we do is correct that and, and we can expect health. What is a subluxation? Well, don't be concerned about the technical term subluxation. It just means that there's a misalignment of one or both of these top two bones in the top of your spine, the atlas or the axis. So you don't have to be concerned about the term. What you do need to be concerned about is if you have a subluxation and the negative impact that it's having on your body. One third of the nerves up here produce pain when they're pinched. Two thirds of them don't. So you see, two thirds of the people are walking around like this saying, I don't need a chiropractor, I feel fine, okay? And they feel fine because the body has produced certain chemicals to deaden the nerves. Otherwise, we would all have just unrelenting pain. And so these hidden subluxations, sadly enough, are as common as cavities. Picture if you have an electrical panel in your garage that runs electricity to your entire house. If the, one, the switches down below run, you flip those breaker switches, they run power to the regions of the house, but that main power switch turns on power to the entire thing. So if you don't get these two bones back in alignment in this upper cervical spine, it's like that main power switch. You're not getting in, that information to that entire house. Your body can't function or heal par properly. The challenge that you have with vertebral subluxations is the fact that the vertebra is, is just not moving and it's crushing and compressing the nerves. And the end result is, is that the, the person can start spiraling downhill, especially if they're using a lot of pharmacological agents because there isn't a drug in the world that's going to move the atlas back into position. And so that's one of the unique dynamics of upper cervical care. An upper cervical care doctor is not chasing after pain or symptoms, they're going right for the cause of that disease or ailment, which is the subluxation. And we're talking about precise corrections here, sometimes millimeters, sometimes even a fraction of a millimeter. That one, that particular one millimeter at the atlas, that particular one millimeter could cause you to have asthma. It could cause you to have reflux. It could cause your heart to not work properly. That one millimeter affects your nervous system. And because the nervous system controls everything, that's why that has such a powerful impact. When your top vertebra dislodges, the rest of the bones all the way down the spine go out of alignment. It's called spinal compensation. When you put the top one back in, through muscle memory, the muscles literally pull the rest of the vertebra in. It's called spinal decompensation. And as those changes take place, the neurological pathways come back to life and the body virtually mends itself. And this is why we chiropractors say that we don't cure anything. It's the body that does the curing. So that's what I say, I'm a facilitator. I remove the interference and I just watch the miracles that happen in your body. The power of upper cervical care is found in the proper placement of those top two bones in your neck, the atlas and the axis. And when your nerve system can function and flow and communicate properly with your body, your body's uh, performing great and it can heal itself. But there's a second issue when you have a misalignment of those top two bones. It's called body imbalance. And I want you to catch this because I want you to see how dependent your bones and the structure of your body is on those two bones being properly aligned. What happens is, when one of these bones in the upper part of the neck get misaligned, the head sits on top of that bone. Well, as the brain is designed to be level, okay, it even has its own reflex that's, that, that makes the head stay level. So when this bone misaligns, it gets stuck, okay? The body can't unstick it. So what it does is the brain will send a message down to the body telling the body to compensate or change itself 
till it gets that head level. Well, what'll happen as a result of that is, let's say the bone goes this way, okay, causing the head to get out of a line or lean over to one side. Well, the, as I said, the brain doesn't work right like that. So to compensate for that, it might cause you to pull down one shoulder, which will throw your weight off to one side. So to balance that, it'll cause you to pull up one hip. That swings your body back over towards an even line of gravity, okay? But in the meantime, it causes these compensations. As you can see on this chart, head leans out one way, pulls one shoulder down, pulls one hip up, making one leg a little shorter than the other. Well, that throws all your balance off towards one side and ultimately can end up in tight, contracted, spastic muscles in anywhere from the base of your head down to the bottom of your feet. So over time, that ultimately starts to wear down and, and can cause some compens compensatory changes that end up causing you neck pain, back pain, leg pain, hip pain, foot pain, knee pain, et cetera. If you will, visualize stack up 24 dominoes, put a bowling ball on top, Biomechanically, that's the structure we're working with. And the critical area is right there at the base of the skull. If you look at the way that it's designed and put together, that's the critical area that will discern where the weight of the head is being carried. And if you center that, the rest of the spine can balance with it. If your head is not on straight, it wants to plop down like this. And we need to keep the head level for equilibrium and balance reasons. So the muscles from the base of the skull to the bottom of the neck, upper, uh, upper thoracic area, have to tighten and shorten to hold the head upright. So you end up having atrophy, dried up muscles on the anterior, and hypertrophy or thickened muscles on the posterior. And this is frequently why people need to have their shoulders rubbed all the time because those muscles are just so tight and rigid. And the irony is, if you have this rigidity, you can go to Hawaii and relax as much as you want and the muscles are still as rigid as can be because they're mechanically having to hold that head up. Now, once the atlas is put back in position and the irritation is taken off of the nerves, the first thing that happens is the cervical thoracic muscles, the muscles down the shoulder blades start to let go. And then the muscles in the anterior neck actually start to wake up and start to pull the curve forward. And sometimes you might even think it's swollen glands and it's not, it's really just the muscles pulling that curve back towards normal. And the curious thing is, when you lose the curve in your neck, you frequently lose the curve in your lower back. And so as your neck curve comes back, your lower back curve comes back. And that's why even though I only adjust upper neck, the number one condition I see in my office is low back pain. And the number two condition I see is sciatica, the pain down the leg into the foot. And it responds extremely well by getting that upper neck put in place. He's, um, I wanna say about eight years old. He uh, is in a wheelchair. Um, but he came in to me about six weeks ago with his left leg easily two and a half inches shorter than his right, and they were looking at some measurable surgical corrections to try and um, deal with that issue because of contractures. And within the first adjustment, we dropped him to within a half an inch. My staff was crying, I was crying, the mom was crying, because sometimes you don't know the power of the adjustment until you set that into play. Upper cervical care is radically different from the health care that you know, a lot of us were raised with, which focuses usually on crisis management. You know, it focuses on symptoms or going to the doctor when you have pain, to reliance on drugs and surgery. And so it's not just different from that, it's also different from general chiropractic care. You know, and that's something that we need to talk about just a little bit because an upper cervical doctor, after receiving their general chiropractic degree, goes on to post-doctorate certification specific to upper cervical care. And so that's something that we need to discuss. It's the difference between if you ask directions to some place and they say, head down here and turn left at the tree, that, it's the difference between that and you go to MapQuest and you have exactly the right information on how to get there. The information that we give as upper cervical doctors to the body to allow it to heal is so much more specific and so much more precise. Because of that, the body is able to take that information and run with it. So people get well quickly and stay well. Upper cervical is based upon the premise that when the atlas changes and it can't pull itself back in, it can create the vast array of problems and rather than focusing on adjusting where the pain is located we focus on getting back to where the epicenter is we will take t a couple of x-rays that are different than you'll find in a medical office and even in a chiropractic office and we'll get measurements on these down to a fourth of a degree trying to determine exactly the alignment and, mis and malposition 
of these two top bones in the neck. Rather than pushing that hip back into alignment, only to have it pull back in the old position because of the tightened muscles, we found by making the upper correction in the atlas area, the upper cervical correction, we can allow the muscles to reposition and restructure the spine. And so this is why we don't make corrections all the way down the spine. We can get that upper neck adjustment to do that for us. What we want to see with patients is not adjust them 5,000 times over the life of their care. Our goal is to make a specific correction, unlock the vertebra, put it back in its normal range of motion, and keep it there for as long as possible. You can adjust a low back problem all that you want, but if that weight of the head is still off-center, the minute they're standing up in a gravitational field, you're going to go back into the same pattern. It's not to say that all chiropractic doesn't work, it certainly does, but I want to clear from above down and inside out. I want to make sure it's on 100%. What we do is safe and gentle and does not hurt people. One of the most important concepts of upper cervical care is the concept of holding your correction. Now within the profession, some people still refer to it as an adjustment, but correction is a more accurate term because that's what we're going for here. A correction that holds, not something that needs to be adjusted over and over again. It's holding the adjustment that gets people better. It's not adjusting them. It's keeping the interference checked out over a period of time that allows people to heal and repair back to normal state of health. I talk about holding is healing. When you're holding your adjustment, that's when you're working at your best. Your, your body is able to function optimally. Chemical insults, including medications, alcohol, smoking, stress, those can make it so that you don't hold your adjustments as well. They weaken the ligaments that hold the body, hold the bones together. Each time I check a patient, I'm looking to see if that body, body is in a healing pattern in terms of balance. Are the muscles of the spine balanced? Is there head neck distortion? Is there locking in the mechanics of the spine? Is there leg length discrepancy? Is there articular pillar pain or tenderness? When all of those are checking clear, that body is in a healing pattern and you need to allow it to continue to heal and only adjust when it's pulling out a pattern and needing that assistance to continue to heal. Within two months, 25 different symptoms that she had were almost completely gone. She held the first correction for six months. That's the power of upper cervical chiropractic. It is not adjusting, it's holding. I didn't heal her. All I did was put the bone back under the body's control, cleared the neural canal, and innate intelligence, that inborn wisdom that flows from above down, from the inside out, restored her back to her to health. On each of her follow-up visits, he would help her maintain that alignment correction so there's no interference in the healing process until it was complete. As you become more familiar with the power of upper cervical care, you begin to see how it aids in the process uh, of, of healing and wellness that your body does naturally from the top down and the inside out. You know, it brings up a question, what about drugs? What about the medications that I'm taking? What about surgery? You know, are drugs evil? Is there a place for that in this style of healthcare? You know, I'm definitely not anti-medical. We have the best medical system in, in the world We're here in the fortunate. United States. We're fortunate to have them. The thing to know is, is, is medicine's place is emergency care. You know, what, and, and you know, a migraine headache to you at the time may feel like an emergency, but it's not emergency. I don't want people to get the impression that we're anti-medication. Um, I wouldn't go to a dentist without an anesthetic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask uh, um, a diabetic not to take insulin. I wouldn't ask a person to have surgery without that. Uh, medication saves lives. What, what worries me is that we're such an over-medicated society. The United States represents 5% of the world population, and yet we consume 70% of the drugs. Instead of being dependent on medications and, and trying to just patch up the symptoms, we get at the root, the cause of the problem, um, and restore that communication so the body can communicate properly and then heal those tissues and resolve the problem. Everything else is from the outside in. That's treating the effect. 
not getting at the basic cause. That's what makes this so unique. The above, down, inside, out, and the power that made this body can heal the body. That's what we're dealing with. You know, one of the questions that upper cervical doctors get asked the most is, if this is so amazing, why haven't I heard of this before? And it's a great question, and there are a bunch of different answers to that question, and some are a bit more complex than others. The public today has been so inundated with intervention that they don't even, they're not even looking for non-interference. They do not realize that it exists. They don't know that that's a choice. They don't know if they can find the underlying problem that's, that's causing whatever condition they have. The overpowering effect of constant advertising is what brainwashes literally people into, oh, I have a headache, I'll take three Tylenol or whatever. And add that to the fact that they're overmarketed too. I mean, you know, it's just a, a well, the average of the average 18-year-old has seen over 20,000 hours of drug commercials. Please don't get me wrong. There are life-saving drugs out there. There are drugs that can save somebody's life, but if you look at the degree of advertising with medications on TV alone, um, you know, we're not being told to look at the body to help balance it. We're being told to take another pill, which has side effects. This information's out there, but there are people that don't want you to know about it. There are people that want this to be kept secret. There are people that denigrate chiropractic in general. That's, that's the biggest thing we have to overcome is the lack of education or, or ignorance of, of the work that we do. But it can happen. It will happen. I want there to be an upper cervical doctor on every block. <laughs> and if the awareness is raised in the public about upper cervical, more chiropractors will choose to do upper cervical. Right now in the United States, out of all the chiropractic schools, there's probably only four that are actually teaching the upper cervical work. What saddens me is how many people out there have problems where they're told it's all in their head, or they're told that there's no answer for you. And that has got to change. And I'm hoping that this upper cervical movement will get so strong that people will realize that the wisdom that made this body made this body to fix itself. There's a better message, there's a better paradigm, and upper cervical will be on the map soon. Upper cervical care can actually help anyone with a nerve system. Nerve system controls your health, nerve system controls function. So whether you're an infant, or whether you're grandma and grandpa, or maybe somebody with a condition already present, or that person who is a top athlete who wants to perform better, upper cervical care can really help anyone perform and be at their best. I've had patients from their first day being born and they had a subluxation, which means that that body was out of alignment, putting pressure from the brain, trying to communicate down, and that baby did need a correction at that time, even though the baby was day one. The youngest patient I've ever adjusted was three hours old. Uh, my oldest was 94 years old. It's just awesome working with kids because they respond so quickly. And it's so great to be able to work with a child and know that they're not gonna have to suffer the things that other people have suffered throughout mm -hmm. their life to take care of the cause of that problem before it ever happens. Some people feel that children or infants can't go out of adjustment. And I find about 50% of the kids I check are blocked out of alignment. And interestingly enough, um, we find constipation, we find colicky problems, we find ear infection problems, and all sorts of problems that kids can have. What concerns me is if that child falls and hits its head on the fireplace hearth, or sits, hits its head on the, on the coffee table, something's gotta give. And just because you don't see any blood doesn't mean damage didn't happen. And oftentimes you'll find you've got this kid that you're calling it the terrible twos, and it might very well be the terrible atlas that's giving them trouble. Getting a child fo checked following birth is one of the most critical times to check a child because the functioning of the brainstem is critical to their development. All I've ever seen are miracles. Children, older people, with all sorts of afflictions. Within just a couple of weeks, the pain was gone and never came back. That was four years ago. 
Now, she still comes to see me after her soccer, ch after her soccer tournaments to get checked because she knows at 15 that when her spine is out of alignment, she's not doing as well. She doesn't play as well. She doesn't feel as good. I love my, I love my high school athletes. They are so much fun. <laughs> if you can imagine if she would have had the opportunity as a child to have gotten checked, to have had her nervous system checked as a child, before her first symptoms of asthma ever even arrived, before um, she had hypertension or, or diabetes, before all those things occurred, if she would have had her nervous system checked, it, I, I'm very confident that her whole entire life, the past 20 years, would have been dramatically different. Her, her potential as a human being and her quality of life would have been very, very different. And so it's exciting to be able to educate people about that so, so children can have the opportunity and more people can know about it so they can live as healthy a life as possible and not have to be faced with huge obstacles down the road because the nervous system wasn't functioning right for over 20 years. The mother who brings her son in, um, two months old, screams for two hours every night because he has colic. That child is experiencing pain, but also the parents are experiencing pain. It's the anguish of, uh, there's nothing I can do. And they tried everything. And then after the child is adjusted, he sleeps like a baby. That, that, that's what I love to see. So every day I touch people and they feel better. It's, an, it's so cool. <laughs> it is. You know, one of the coolest things about upper cervical care is that upper cervical care doctors focus on this part of the body, but they see healing all over the body. And so there are so many amazing stories that we would like to share with you. Here are a few. When we were first married, I couldn't touch Angela's face or run my fingers down her spine. I've been very proud of how she handled all that pain. At school, sometimes kids do these posters and they put their hands in paint and they stick their hands on the poster. And she wrote this, it was Father's Day, Dear Dad, and of course they helped them write this stuff, but it was in painting. Um, I really love you, I hope you get well. Two little hands. <laughs> she knew I was sick. She didn't know why. And I didn't know why. He's about seven years old, and since birth, he's been paralyzed. A whole half of his face completely paralyzed. And the doctor said, there's absolutely nothing we can do. You're going to have to live with this for the rest of your life. He started under care a couple months ago, and now he, can, he, can, he has a crease on, on his inside of his lip when he smiles. He can smile with that side of his face, and he's starting to be able to move the upper part of his eyebrow and eyelid. Um, so. It's amazing. So I got off the table and for the first time, my low back pain was gone. My neck and shoulders just, it was just like somebody just untwisted a tight dish rag or something and it just, it just dissipated. And then Michael said, well, take a couple of steps. So I took a couple of steps and my legs weren't tingling yet. And because I had, I guess, neuropathy, I think is the name of it, but anyway, the tingling. And I took a few more steps and it didn't. And so I said, well, why don't you, you know, walk out to the mailbox? Because I hadn't been able to go out to the mailbox, which was only about, what, 20 or 30 feet? 20 feet, yeah. So I put on my tennis shoes and I walked out there and I kind of just kept going. <laughs> I walked a mile. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I could, the next day, I go off to work, I'm in my skirt suit, my heels, carrying my briefcase, the whole thing, walking the three city blocks to get into the office. Nobody has a clue. I meet everybody, go through the orientation. No one has a clue that I was, like, almost immobile for the year before that. She's dragging her left leg, walking with a cane. Okay, so we x-ray her, adjust her on Thursday night. Saturday morning, she came back into the office to be rechecked. No cane, and lifted her leg up. 
And I looked at her and I said, what happened? You know, it blew me away, so to speak. And she says, that's not all of it. You had me lay down for 15 minutes. I have people rest after an adjustment. After I got up, I went to the car and I put my leg in the car without any help or assistance. That was 20 minutes later. She'd been walking with a cane and dragging that leg around for six years. You see why I won't retire? And I could hear everything. And the ringing stopped. And my back's feeling much more relaxed. I don't have any pain and tingling stopping. And I got home and I ate something. And it was hardly in, I still had a bit of pain, but there wasn't any excruciating pain. It wasn't driving me over. But I was very careful not to use the jaw too much. But I was so happy that I picked up my daughter, Holly, we danced, I had like this until, I think it was like three o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then she was asleep, I took her up to bed, put her down, and I crashed out. And I, I don't know, I think it was 12 hours, 15 hours, I'm quite sure it was a long time. And I woke up and I felt I was a 21 year old again. And I'm, all, I'm looking in the mirror and my head's not like this anymore, it's like this. Uh, I have a patient who has um, cerebral palsy and a 13-year-old boy. When he first came into my office, he had, he's had multiple surgeries for his, on his arms and legs because his bones were twisted. And when he first came into my office, his right foot flared out, almost horizontal compared to the left foot. The next time he came in to see me, his foot was almost parallel to the other one. The next time, three days later, he came in to see me, his foot was almost parallel. And he, 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 what he cares about, he's running faster. His, his teachers report that he's doing better in school. And, I mean, it's changed his life. She came in two weeks ago and had this smile on her face. And I asked her, I said, what, what's going on? And she looked at me and um, said, I'm pregnant. I said, you're pregnant, that's amazing, congratulations. I said, how long have you been trying? And she turned and looked at real straight face and said, I've never been on birth control. We just never thought I could get pregnant, that I could conceive. And then she turned to me and said, I know it's been being under this care. I know upper cervical specific care has, has changed my life, has allowed my body to function the way it's supposed to, and given my body then the ability to function properly so that I could then conceive. There was a 10-year-old boy who, his sister and his mother and father are real good patients. And last Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving, you say thanks. The family gets together and grandma is there and they're all holding hands at the table and they have to say, what are you thankful for, each person? It came to that 10-year-old and he says, I'm thankful for Dr. Kuhn. <laughs> and it isn't just me, it's recognizing that he has his health. He could come in with a flu or a cold and get adjusted and the next day be fine. And he sees his other kids in the classroom all sick and whatever. And he was smart enough to say, I thank you for Dr. Kuhn. I really appreciated that. Unfortunately, upper cervical care is still the best kept secret in healthcare, and we're trying to change that. You know, these videos are a part of that change. UpperCervicalCare.com is doing its part as well. But you know, to fully understand why upper cervical care hasn't fully infiltrated society, you've got to understand its history. In 1893, uh, a man by the name of Daniel David Palmer, went by the name D.D. Palmer, um, he was working in his office one night and he had a janitor there that was telling him about how he lost his hearing like 17 years ago. Uh, and what happened was he heard a little pop sound uh, up in his neck and then all of a sudden his hearing went away. Well, Dee Dee said, well, let's, let's take a look at your neck and see if maybe we can figure out why, what happened to make you lose your hearing. So when he started feeling around his neck, he felt a little lump. And what happened was he pushed on that lump and made a popping sound. Well, at first nothing happened. 
So he did it three days in a row and pushed on that lump and popped that neck and boom, his hearing came back all of a sudden. So Dee Dee Palmer said, I've got the cure for all deaf people. Dee Dee had people coming from all over the world with deafness. Well, not all the deaf people got their hearing back, but what he found was that a lot of other conditions started clearing up. People had kidney problems that cleared up and heart conditions and stuff like that. So then his son comes into the picture, B.J. Palmer, who is uh, known as uh, the developer of chiropractic because he took what Dee Dee was doing, which was basically pushing up and down three times on each side of the spine, any high spot, just pop, 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 and anything he could pop. And some people got better, some people didn't. BJ decided, hey, we need to narrow this down. We need to find out why some people are getting better and some people aren't. So in 1935, uh, BJ started a research center. And he started off with, just like what DD did, and was adjusting all the way down one side and all the way back down the other side, was pushing all the high spots. And he narrowed it down and did less and less and less. And he found his results got better and better and better. And when it was all done, and by the end of his 16 years research of only the worst of the worst cases, he found that it was one of the top two bones in the, in the body, the upper cervical spine, that was the cause of pretty much all of these ailments. So that was in 1951, by the time the research was finished. Well, during that time from 19, 1893 to 1951, there was a lot of people who learned Dee Dee Palmer's process of adjusting up and down the spine, up and down the spine. Well, by 1951, when the upper cervical research came out, um, there had been a lot of other schools had popped up all over America that were teaching people how to adjust the entire spine. Well, B.J. Palmer did the upper cervical work, and then he later left the clinic and died in 1961. Well, that was only a 10-year span where upper cervical was taught at a full-time level out of his school. When B.J. passed, his son, David Palmer, then took over the college. Well, B.J. Palmer was known all over the world. He had been to the White House with four different presidents. He took care of Dr. Mayo and his family uh, from the Mayo Clinic. He was world-renowned. Well, his son David had kind of lived in his shadow, so by the, when B.J. then passed, um, David Palmer came in and he removed everything that had B.J. on it, removed all the upper cervical stuff, and went back to the full spine model, which was taught in most of the schools across the country today. So even as recently as 20 years ago, I would say there were a handful of upper cervical doctors. Now in the last 10, 12 years, there's been a real surge of and growth and popularity in upper cervical, especially the last four or five years with uh, the production now of uh, documentaries on upper cervical, uh, huge conferences. Now we've got uh, postgraduate diplomat programs. So, so now the upper cervical work is really starting to pick up some momentum, which may be why you're hearing about it now because of web pages such as this. Upper cervical care is a radically different way of looking at healthcare. You know, when people start to uh, understand more about it, they get excited about it, they understand that we're dealing with the top two bones in their neck there. They, they begin to see how it relates to their nerve system and how removing interference on that brain stem when one of those bones are misaligned um, can really bring health to their body. It's a natural way of, of looking at healthcare. And uh, you know what? Uh, all the information in the world is not going to help unless someone takes some action. So tell us a little bit about uh, what happens after someone says, yeah, I want, to, I want to check this out. I want to see an upper cervical doctor. Um, well, obviously the first step would be to pick up the phone and call the upper cervical doctor nearest you uh, to schedule your appointment. Now when you go in for that appointment, there may be uh, some paperwork that needs to be filled out, get a little bit, of, uh, a little bit more history on, uh, on the patient's problem. Um, and then they'll set up, they'll go back and have a consultation with the doctor. And there the doctor will dive even deeper into that person's history and, and if there's been any traumas, any, anything that could have led them up to the point that got them into that office on this particular day. Um, then they'll take them back and do a, a, an upper cervical evaluation, which is a very specific analysis to determine if that patient actually has a problem in the upper part of their neck or not. If they do find a problem there, then they take it to the next step which is to take a very specific set of x-rays to determine exactly how that upper bone or upper bones are, are positioned or, or out of position and possibly leading to the person's condition that brought them in today. So those x-rays are super specific and they're tailored for that patient and the doctor is able to then evaluate those x-rays and then set up a second visit. Mm -hmm. Typically the doctor will be able to, to look over those x-rays on that, that, that evening, usually that first visit. So the patient could come back in as soon as the next day. 
um, where then the doctor will actually go over those x-rays with the patient. They'll actually show them, okay, this is the position of the bone now, and this is where it's supposed to be, and this is how we feel it's causing your problem. Now also on that, on that second visit, they'll give them their first correction, uh, which means they'll actually reposition that bone back where it's supposed to be. So this is a very, uh, a very gentle correction, very different maybe if you've experienced the even chiropractic care, um, and we're trying to correct. Some people don't like to call it adjustments because we don't want to adjust forever, do we? We really want to correct and free up that brain stem to, to operate properly. So then there's a third, there's a follow-up visit, right? There's one more? One well, more it, if that doctor determines that he can't help them, uh, then they'll set up another appointment for the, for the patient to come in and go through a very specific care plan for that particular patient. Uh, every patient's different, obviously, so they all require different type of plan. So that doctor will go through that patient's history, the x-rays, um, and put together a tailored program to help that person get well. And they'll usually go over that on the third visit. Also, based off of that plan, they'll put together a, a financial plan uh, to go along with it to uh, make it affordable. And does insurance cover uh, some of you know, the way upper cervical care? Is that, is that part of that? Yeah, if you have chiropractic coverage, uh, then uh, it, it will pay for upper cervical care at the same time. And then we will, we will put together a variety of different payment plans uh, best suited for each patient just to make sure that it'll be affordable to them. Uh, this is different than um, some people that experience in chiropractic care because this is something that you know it's almost like you're trying to get out of their life aren't you because you're trying to say hey we're trying to correct you and free you and hold that correction right so it's not like we want to see you three times for every week for the rest of your life, is it? Right. See, that's what's so good about upper cervical care is we have a system uh, to check to see if there is a problem or not. And, and obviously, as you're correcting a problem, eventually it's going to start to stay corrected. Mm. We, probably, uh, we probably correct or adjust less than half of what, uh, what general chiropractic does. So it's not, it's, you may not be corrected every single visit. Oh no, if you are, there's something wrong. Yeah, that, yeah so we no. don't want that, that's not our, that's not our no, goal. No, our, our goal is to fix the problem, and it's not, you know, if, if it's not starting to hold, then we need to do a reevaluate re what's going on, why it's not holding. You know, all the information in the world is, uh, is not gonna help unless you take action. At UpperCervicalCare.com, you click the Locate a Doctor button. There's an interactive map. There's other different ways that you can find a doctor near you. And it doesn't, you don't have to be in pain right now. You know, this is, this is a new way of looking at healthcare. It's preventative and it's really, we want everybody to operate at 100% capacity um, naturally and, and living your best. So take action today to find an upper cervical doctor. X-rays in an upper cervical doctor's office is one of the most uh, specific tools to get down to the most precise measurement of how a bone has actually locked in, in an abnormal position. So for an upper, upper cervical doctor to utilize the proper care for a patient, we need to know how that bone is moved even to the nth degree of millimeter because that millimeter of misalignment can mean literally life or death. Each patient that I wish to adjust accurately, I need to pinpoint the cause of their subluxation and what that pattern is. Without that blueprint, I'm only guessing. When the spine misaligns, it's not that this bone goes out of place. It only goes out of place in relationship to everything else. So what we do then is from this central or central zero point, the x-rays that we take from the side, the front and the top, what we're looking for is to see how much forward or backward how much turning side to side, and how much to the right or the left. Well, there's 274 different ways the bone can misalign, and I would want to be very specific on how we align it so your body can achieve the best health. And so we actually have to take precise x-rays of the neck to find out just exactly how far that upper cervical subluxation is out of alignment so we know exactly how to adjust it back into place. And if you know the exact angles and degrees, it doesn't take much force. And my x-rays are very uh, specific and that means we take nine x-rays two of them are in stereo stereoscopic I want to know where that bone is and that means not that it just slipped right or left did it go forward and up to the right or did it go back and under to the right if it went back and under I want to adjust it back towards center if it went back and under I don't want to be over here I certainly don't want to be on the other side I'm stressing a millimeter to two millimeter misalignment, so this has got to be finessed. <laughs> yeah, 
very, very, very precise and specific, and it begins with the x-rays. They have to be perfect because they show us how the bones have moved out of alignment. And what I'm looking at on the x-rays is a millimeter, a millimeter misalignment, two millimeters. So I have to take that x-ray perfectly. We spend an enormous amount of time learning how to do these films so that we can get the perfect film so that I can know exactly what is going on in your spine. Well, after your first correction, um, you may experience some soreness um, due to the body being out of balance for so long and the body's trying to get back in balance. There's a lot of muscles and stuff that have been out of place and as they start to restructure, there's toxins that build up in the muscles. So the muscles um, have to um, get rid of those toxins and that's why you could be sore. So we encourage patients to drink tons of water so that doesn't happen. Um, another thing is patients may not experience anything at all. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a good thing or necessarily a bad thing. It just may take time for that body to heal. And then the third thing, some people may experience um, relief. You know, as patients come in, they may have a headache, we do an alignment, and then the headache could go away, for example. Patients will come to us and say, you know what, um, I'm no lo longer having bladder issues, and we never knew they had bladder issues. You know, the body just starts to heal itself. We don't know what it could possibly be, be helping. Within minutes, some things started to happen, positive things. It was almost like my whole feet started to warm up. When she turned that switch on and opened that up, so that brain stem that sat right in the center of those two, when she opened that up, the first thing my brain stem did is it heard and felt this pain. And I'm sure it said, what are you doing? And my jaw went, I'm pouring it on. And my brain said, stop that. And it stopped. That was the only adjustment I ever gave her. She made it a miraculous recovery. Lived 15 years after that. Friends and neighbors call it a miracle. How long will it take a patient to get better under cervical care is a very tricky question because it really depends on multitudes of different factors. You know, how old the patient is once they come into an office, how long the problem's been there, what degree of damage we see on an x-ray. Uh, so really, it encompasses many different factors. So we can see people get immediate symptomatic relief or problem relief right after a correction. And sometimes it might take months or years to the body for to completely resolve itself of a health condition. And it also depends on what your lifestyle factors are like. Maybe you know if you're a smoker or if you have any kind of emotional stress or, or, or physical stress, maybe you have a demanding job. Or, and so a lot of those factors take into play. And really what it comes down to is that you have to know what it takes in all aspects of your life to regain health. 25% of the patients we adjust within the first week, they have what I call the wow experience. Wow. If I had known about this 20 years ago, I would have been here 20 years ago. The other percentage of patients, they slowly start to come out of this, their problems. And, and that makes sense if you've been suffering, had tissue damage and inflammation and ligament damage and all sorts of problems, it's not gonna happen overnight. But it took five years to completely correct that neurological situation. Um, I've seen many younger patients and patients who have not had those problems as significantly as she has heal up much faster. Now, for instance, for a small child that's only had a misalignment a few days or a few weeks or a couple years, obviously can recover quicker than someone that's had a misalignment for 30 or 40 years. How long you've had your subluxation plays a major role. If you were dropped on the floor or fell off the changing table at, at, at age one, and came in to see me at age 30. 30 year old patient's pretty young, but they have a 29 year old subluxation. And the problem that they're going to have is their muscles will have amnesia. They've lost their memory. So they do not know how to pull themselves back in place. So you might think the number one objective I have is to get rid of your pain and get rid of your symptoms. And fortunately with upper cervical, that's usually the first thing to go away. But what I'm really concerned about is getting the memory back in those muscles and ligaments. 
so that they can start pulling the segment back in on their own. I don't want to follow you around the rest of your life <laughs> when you go to Yosemite. Well, maybe when you go to Yosemite, why? But what I'd, what I'd rather do is have that spine regain its memory it's supposed to have and learn how to fix itself. You know, the more I learn about upper cervical care, I, I do get more excited the more I understand about it, but the thing that really blew my mind is when I learned about retracing, which is such a, an amazing phenomena, um, but the more I understand about it, the more I realize that this is natural healing, and as we remove any interference from the brain stem, as, as the doctor removes that and the nerve system begins to operate properly, naturally, without drugs, um, some strange phenomena can take place. Yeah, you know, most people have never been through a real healing process. Um, you know, you have symptoms through life, let's say headaches, low back pain, whatever. Okay, well, typically you'll take a medication. Okay, right. well, no medication in the history of mankind, as you know, have ever healed anything. Sure. They just temporarily cover the symptom up, giving the body enough time to adapt or compensate to whatever is causing that problem. Well, this happens over your lifespan, and so when you to uh, under upper cervical care, you actually go through a real healing process. And it's not just a healing of whatever brought you in, it's a total healing. Um, so over that time, you may heal back through some of those things that have affected you earlier in your life that never really got corrected, just got right. kind of smoothed over, okay? Wow. So you might have symptoms uh, that uh, you haven't had in 10 years that could all of a sudden pop up as your body starts to go through mm. these th these healings. And so it can be scary, can it, really? Yeah, and, it and But it's temporary, right? It's not like you're gonna continue to have this experience take place. Right. Right? I would say typically it lasts one to two days up to uh, you know maybe a couple weeks but it's not going to be anything that's going to knock you out but it could be you know some rough edges you get through but the good thing about it is once you get through it this time you know right. you've healed over it it's over with. Right and so you need to be aware of this because when you go in even after your first correction it could happen immediately you can start having experiences or pain or discomfort um, or maybe it'll take a month or two and people start to have this and so the reason we wanted to talk to you about it was because you need to be aware of this this um, so that you're ready when you go in for your first correction. Retracing is like, you know, you leave your house in the morning, you're going to work. So you get in your car and you go through a sequence of events to get to work. You might pass a couple hotels, a couple McDonald's, and you get to work. So when you come home, you actually backtrack and go through that same sequence, maybe backwards, you pass the same hotels, pass that McDonald's again to get back to your house. Health is kind of the same way. Disease is kind of the same thing. Your, your body's either doing one of two things. It's either getting healthier or it's getting sicker. And so usually, once people are sick and they enter an upper cervical doctor's office and we basically remove that subluxation and turn the life switch here on, what happens is your body, once it was healthy, you know, when you were born, you were healthy and, and you got disease. So as we turn that life switch on, your body's gonna go backtrack through those sequence of events through life again. So once you start out healthy, maybe when you were 10, you had headaches. Maybe when you were 20, you had fibromyalgia. When you were, when you were 40, you had uh, leg pain. So as you go back through those events and your body repairs and changes, it's a, you might experience that, that change again. You might experience that leg pain temporarily or, or that, temp, that fibromyalgia type symptom te temporarily as your body backtracks or goes through that sequence of events again to get back to 100% health. So retracing is actually a, a, a unique phenomena in, in, in the process of regaining your health. We have patients all the time, I could tell you story after story, of tennis players that come in that rotate, rip their rotator cuff up. 20 years ago, have a surgery, you get them corrected and they come in a week later and say, I don't know and I don't explain to them retracing the first visit. I don't know what you did to me, but five days after I was adjusted, all of a sudden my rotator cuff started bothering me. And you know the funny thing? 20 years ago I had a rotator, rotator cuff injury and I'm feeling that same pain. And not only do I hurt in that area? I emotionally feel like I'm back, and it's almost like a flashback. You'll hear this. He had severe migraine headaches for, for months, and of course went to all these different specialists and weren't able to get help. Well, he came to me for that, and did not even mention that he had lower back issues 20 years ago, because obviously that was not an issue. Um, so as we were correcting his spine, let's say his head was tilting this way, his shoulder is tilting this way, and his lower back was tilting. Well, he had an injury 20 years ago for this lower back um, that his body has just compensated over the years. At the time, he didn't have lower back problems. The, the pain was he was presenting with migraines. Well, as we got the body back aligned, his head got straighter, his shoulders got straighter, and his legs got balanced, which means his pelvis was realigning and the lower back pain came back and it was um, 
I just explained to him why well, his body was readjusting, it never healed properly 20 years ago. So finally the body was able to, as the brain was sending the messages down to the lower back, was able to heal that lower back and he was able to recover not just from his migraines, but that reoccurring ear, uh, injury that he had from his lower back. Upper cervical in the human body is more than just pain and symptoms. Every single experience you've had in your life is stored in your central nerve system. Emotions, physical pain, events. So we don't just see physical things happen in our office. In fact, the most profound things I see in my office are people with emotional disturbances. And the very thing that was missing was this idea of the structural misalignment, the stress on the nervous system, and how that affects me on that feeling, emotional, and mental level, not just the physical. So with retracing, it's not just physical experiences, but it's emotional as well. Right. Um, most people don't realize, but the brain is really just an organ, just like the okay. liver, lungs, kidneys, hearts. Okay, it's innervated by the nerve system. Um, when you have a, a thought process or an emotion or memory or something like that, it doesn't. Just, it's not just a spark going off in a, in, in a part okay. of your brain and it stays there. It actually travels. Okay, this is in any neuroanatomy book. It'll start in one part of the brain. It'll travel down to that brain stem, and then the brain stem, like the switchboard operator, will send it to the part of the brain that's to interpret that message. Okay, so boom, boom over here. Okay, so. If, if one of those bones had been misaligned and interferes with that mental transmission from one part right. of the brain to another part of the brain, then, um, then it can interfere with that, um, for example, emotion. And let's say, you know, uh, let's say it was uh, uh, a feeling of sadness or something, okay. you know, that message never got fully expressed. Okay, so if you were to go in and, and you were to remove that interference, all of a sudden mm -hmm. you might have a mad rush of a, of a certain emotion wow. um, that, that is affected and the person, you know, has no, no explanation to like, you know, I, I, nothing made me sad, but I can't quit crying. Sure. Or nothing made me happy, but I can't, can't quit laughing. And so you're saying even after that first correction, like right when that's, it can happen immediately sometimes? It can happen immediately. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it, it doesn't happen for weeks or even months later. Wow. But, uh, you know, as part of the healing process, sometimes you release some of those emotions that, have ne that, that had not been previously released. So sadness, joy even? Can exactly. I mean, one of the most memorable things I, uh, that happened to me in my office was one day uh, a person came in, got their very first correction. I took them out in my office. I have a rest area where you lay down for a few minutes to make sure that we, we got the correction. And, and so I walked out there and she'd been laying down I walked out there and there's 10 people laying down and they're all just belly laughing and I walked down like what is going on wow. well the one patient said I don't know she said but I just can't quit laughing and you know laughing's contagious right. so once she started you know it dominoed everybody in the whole place was just dying laughing uh, unbelievable and it just happened after a first correction boom that comes back first you know it's it's a it's a strange phenomenon but it's it's natural and you know, a lot of people obviously don't know about you know what what it means for your body to naturally heal itself, but it's it's temporary, right? I mean, you're not going to be experiencing right. this forever. It, typically, it'll happen within the first two or three uh, corrections, or possibly even two or three weeks down the road. But it only lasts, um, you know, sometimes it'll last for a few minutes, up to uh, you know maybe a week or so, mm. um, you know, depending on what type of uh, retracing it is and how long you'd had it previously. Unbelievable. So that's what we got, we got to talk about that because you need to understand what's happening before you go in because it can be a shock to people, uh, but that is uh, the amazing phenomena of retracing.